Guild Wars 2 came out all the way back in 2012, and ever since its launch, it's been my go-to MMORPG. That's not to say I haven't played any other MMOs, but Guild Wars 2 is the one which I always find myself coming back to. I've clocked over 10,000 hours in this game, which means that for the past 10 years, I've been playing for an average of 3 hours a day. I think I need to go outside more. But why? Why is Guild Wars 2 my MMO of choice? Why play Guild Wars 2? Hello gamers, my name is Lemanity and I make Guild Wars 2 content for a living. Today I'll be explaining to you why I like this game so much, so that you can figure out whether you might like it too. We'll also talk a bit about the state of the game in 2024 and also the game's future. Let's get started. The first thing you'll notice when you start Guild Wars 2 is that the playable races are kinda awesome. There's the less unique humans and viking humans, but there's also the super creative beast-like Char, the plant-like Silvari, and also the rat-like Asura. That's not an insult, I actually think rats are very cute and Wow, just look at their animations. Guild Wars 2 is a game which just feels very polished and very high quality. The movements and animations feel incredible, the combat is super satisfying and the game world looks absolutely gorgeous. Actually, let's start there. In most MMOs, the open world is kind of the least exciting part of the game. You run around doing quests to level up, but once you hit max level, there's usually not many reasons to go back. Guild Wars 2, on the other hand, has a big focus on its open world, even in the end game. The world is filled with so-called dynamic events, which are just kind of things that happen. Maybe a village is being attacked, maybe an NPC needs escorting to a nearby town, or maybe a dragon is determined to kill everyone ever. These large kill events are called meta events and they usually require massive groups of players to complete. It is so cool to take down a massive boss with an army of players and the rewards are still very good even at max level. Other MMOs have tried to do stuff like this, but in my opinion nothing comes even close to Guild Wars 2's event system. Besides these events, there is also a big focus on exploration and sometimes the game can almost feel a bit like a metroidvania. To explore the whole map you have to level movement tools such as gliding, bounty mushrooms, skiffs and of course mounts. Guild Wars 2 has in my opinion easily the best mount system out of any MMORPG. They are so good that uh, WoW Dragonfly got maybe a little bit inspired. Honestly, I kind of think it's a good thing for MMOs to take inspiration from each other, but you know, sometimes you just cannot beat the original. Guild Wars 2 has 9 different mounts, which might not seem like a lot at first, but each of these mounts handles completely differently. The Raptor can, for example, jump super far and cross gaps. The Springer can jump super high and is ridiculously cute. The Skimmer can hover over water, the Sky Skill is like a free flying helicopter, and the Gryphon is basically a jet plane. Each mount is an absolute joy to use, and I think they are easily the best mounts in the MMO industry. Next, let's talk about the Guild Wars 2's combat. The combat in this game is in two words fast and mobile. Imagine taking a generic tap targeted MMO combat system, but then you fuse it with a MOBA. Almost all of your skills let you move while you cast them, and there's also skill shots, gap closers, blinks. The combat moves very fast, and it feels very liberating compared to many MMOs out there. Guild Wars 2's combat also features a dodge roll. This feels a lot like Monster Hunter or Dark Souls, and if you want to survive the hard encounters, you will have to master this. You only get a limited amount of dodges, so you cannot just dodge spam to victory. Looking at you, Dark Souls 3. If your HP hits zero in Guild Wars 2, you don't immediately die. Instead, you go into down states. This is similar to lots of shooter games that you might have played. It gives you a chance to take down this one HP enemy and come back, and it also gives your teammates an opportunity to arrest you. Guild Wars 2's combat is pretty easy to pick up. 
you can immediately hop into the game and have a good time with the combats. But if you enjoy a challenge and truly want to become a pro at the game, there is a ton of depth here that will keep you coming back for more. 12,000 hours of coming back for more, in my case. Guild Wars 2 features 9 different playable classes, with each 3 elite specializations that they can become at max level. All of these 27 specializations play quite differently, so it's pretty likely that there will be one that fits your playstyle. By the way, if you're not sure which one to pick, I actually have a class guide video on my channel showcasing all of them. Link is in the description. But there is more to choose than just your class and specialization. The buildcraft in this game is incredibly deep. You also get to pick your weapons, utility skills, gear stats, traits, runes, sigils, relic. There are loads of options and you can really make a build that fits your playstyle perfectly. Wanna be a tanky mage? You can do that. Wanna be a warrior who yells at their friends to make them feel better? You can do that too. Warrior is actually getting a healer weapon next month, which I am really hyped about. This build freedom can be a little bit overwhelming at first, and it's also pretty easy to end up making a bad build. But fortunately, you can respec whenever you want, and you can always take a look at the internet and copy what the pros recommend. That is what I usually do. Alright, you've got your bills and you've grinded your gear. You are now raid ready. It's finally time to join your friends and kill some raid bosses. Let's go! <laughs> New patch just drops. Your previous gear is now... worthless. Time to start your gear grinds all over again. Don't you hate it when that happens? Well, in Guild Wars 2, this is not a thing. The game is kind of unique in the MMO space because it doesn't have a gear treadmill. The level cap and the best gear have been the same for the past 10 years, which is honestly really nice. If you are one of those people who has what is known as a life, not me, this can be really helpful. You can easily take a break, return to the game later and get straight back into the hardest endgame content. All your gear from years ago will still be good. Now, I can hear some of you thinking, but Lara, I don't want the game to be casual friendly. I'm an old school RuneScape main and actually enjoy grinding for hours on end. If there is no gear grind in this game, what is there to keep me playing? Well, you can also just, uh, play for for fun because you enjoy playing the game i know it's a weird thought nah i i totally get you i actually enjoy old school runescape as well and sometimes having a goal to grind for can be really fun guild wars 2's endgame is all about chasing cool cosmetics and also legendary gear the game has got a really solid fashion system where you unlock skins and dice on your account forever have i mentioned that once you buy a die you can use it infinitely it's it's so nice but the absolutely coolest skins are from legendary gear legendary gear doesn't offer you better stats than the usual best installed gear but it does look amazing and it also offers super useful utility like for example free stat swapping free transmutation and using it on all of your alls at once Getting full legendary gear is the ultimate grind goal in Guild Wars 2, and after 12 grey hours, I am almost there. But the cool thing is, this legendary grind is entirely optional. It is there if you enjoy grinding, but you never need legendaries. Getting regular best installed race ready gear is really quite easy, and it doesn't take very long at all. Hey, uh, by the way, I also totally have a guide on how to get gear, so you, sh you should totally subscribe. Speaking of raids, let's talk about Guild Wars 2's endgame. Once you reach max level, there is a lot of content for you to do in this game. It can actually be a little bit overwhelming, which is why I made this other video to explain it to you. Alright, I, I need to stop plugging all my videos, sorry. <laughs> I'll give you the short version. Like I mentioned before, the open world in Guild Wars 2 stays very relevant even at max level, but there is also plenty of instance content to do if that is your thing. Highlights here are Fractals, which are 5-man dungeons that you can progress to higher and higher difficulties. 
Fractals start easy, but once you progress to the higher tiers and try out the challenge modes, you are truly in for a challenge. For 10-man content, there are several raids and also strike missions, which are basically standalone raid bosses. Since 2019, ArenaNet has kind of moved away from making raids in favor of doing the standalone strike mission bosses instead. The community was initially pretty skeptical about this, but in my opinion, ArenaNet has proven that these standalone bosses can be just as good as raid bosses. My favorite fight in the game is the Harvest Temple Challenge Mode Strike. This is easily the hardest fight in the game, and it took me and my team about a month to clear it. But gosh, it felt so good once we did it. Pull DPS, pull DPS, right you move out. If you're more into PvP, Guilty Steel has two game modes for you. First up is Structured PvP or SPVP. These are balanced 5v5 matches where you capture control points and kill enemies to win. This is easily my least played game mode because I, uh, I'm just kind of bad at it. But some of my more skilled friends play a lot of SPVP. The other PvP game mode is World vs Worlds, and that game mode is more my thing. In World vs Worlds, massive teams of players fight in large open world maps over territory. There are castle sieges, small scale skirmishes, and also thief mains trying to gank you. There is a huge community around this game mode, and many Guild Steel players spend almost all of their time Recently, I've been doing a lot of World vs. World commanding on my stream, where I will team up with my viewers to try to take objectives. Aight, I think that at this point you have a pretty solid idea of what Guild Wars 2 is like. It is a very polished MMORPG, with fantastic combat, a dynamic open world and lots of endgame content to play. But Guild Wars 2 is also 11 years old at this point. Is it still worth getting into this game? Let's talk a bit about the state of the game, because, well, nobody wants to play a dead game. I would say that right now the game is in a really good spot. In the past two years, we've had two solid expansions, which were both financially successful, and the game has also come to Steam for the first time. No matter where you go in the game walls, there's always people running content, and the chat is always active. As a new player, it's also really easy to catch up. Reaching max level is very fast, and obtaining max stat gear is also not very difficult. Honestly, there's really never been a better time to get into Guild Wars 2. The studio is actually committed to doing yearly expansions from now on. Last year's Secrets of the Obscure expansion was the first of these, but there will also be another expansion this summer, and there's already been talk of a 2025 expansion. These yearly expansions are a bit smaller than previous expansions, but they come out much faster, are only 25 years each, and they also include a year of content patches. Speaking of expansions, Guild Wars 2's monetization is also, in my opinion, quite alright. There is no subscription fee, and the gem store is one of the fair ones out there. You can buy stuff like mount skins, backspace, and level skips, but I've never ever felt like I needed to spend money to be able to keep up with my friends. You can even trade gold for the cash shop currency, which means that you can technically buy anything on the gem store for gold instead of real money. The base game is free, but if you really want to play the game long term, I highly recommend getting the expansions. That's where most of the relevant content nowadays is, so I would really consider the free base game to be like a free trial. It is free though, so if you want to give the game a shot, all you have to do is go and download it. And that was a very quick overview of why I think Guild Wars 2 is a fantastic MMORPG. If you decide to dive into the game, definitely take a look at the rest of my channel for loads of Guild Wars 2 content. And if you have any questions, the best way to ask me is to stop by my Twitch stream. I'm live with Guild Wars 2 5 nights a week over at twitch.tv slash and I am always down to chat. I absolutely love this game, and I really hope that you will as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in Tyria.